The Dallas Cowboys 2-7 are fresh off a bye and will visit the Minnesota Vikings 4-5 Sunday afternoon. Kickoff from U.S. Bank Stadium will be at 4.25 p.m. The Cowboys have lost four games in a row and haven't scored more than 19 points in a game since October 11 against the New York Giants. They're 23rd in points scored per game this season and 32nd in scoring defense. They've struggled mightily since losing QB Dak Prescott to a season-ending injury. The Vikings started the year 1-5 but have since won three games in a row over the Green Bay Packers, Detroit Lions and Chicago Bears. RB Dalvin Cook has emerged as the top running back in the NFL, helping the Vikings rank fifth in rushing. Minnesota's defense has improved in recent weeks, too, allowing no more than 22 points in its last three games. Here is injury report, the Cowboys started this week missing just two players from their first full practice. Defensive end Randy Gregory illness and rookie center Tyler Biata's hamstring were the only two with a DNP. While Andy Dalton and defensive end Tyrone Crawford from the reserve COVID-19 list and placed cornerback Trevon Diggs Diggs on injured reserve. 16 days after landing on the reserve COVID-19 list, Andy Dalton's sense of taste and smell still elude him. You can tell things are sweet, the Cowboys quarterback said Thursday from the star. You can tell things are salty. You just don't get the flavor with it. After a whirlwind month battling a concussion and then the novel coronavirus, Dalton will settle for that. The Cowboys signed Dalton in May as insurance for four-year starter Dak Prescott. When Prescott suffered a season-ending ankle injury October 11, Dalton replaced him to complete Dallas' 34-31 win over the Giants. But two games later, a vicious head-to-head -head hit from Washington linebacker John Bostick left a helmetless Dalton sprawled on the grass of FedEx Field. He relies on others to tell him what happened next. I remember deciding to slide and then there's a little bit there that I don't remember, said Dalton, who had avoided a concussion diagnosis through his first 140 career games. In the moment, you don't realize it. But then the aftermath of it all, kind of going back, you realize you're missing some of your memory of stuff that's happened. I mean, that's definitely something you don't want to have happen. Dalton was cleared to fly back from Washington with the team. He went through NFL concussion protocol the final week of October, unable to practice but allowed to participate in some meetings that week as rookie seventh-rounder Ben DiNucci prepared to start at Philadelphia. Dalton was at the facility and in the Cowboys quarterbacks meeting October 31st just before the team left town without him. His headaches and concussion symptoms had alleviated as the week elapsed. Dalton was hopeful he could be cleared to play the undefeated Steelers the following week. Then, Dalton's headaches returned. They felt different from his earlier week concussion aftermath. Dalton tested positive for COVID-19, landing on the Cowboys reserve list November 3rd. His wife and younger son tested positive a couple of days after, while their daughter and older son did not appear to contract it. Quarantining at the Dalton home ensued. Dalton could lift weights and text Garrett Gilbert as the journeyman prepared to be the Cowboys' fourth quarterback in five weeks. But Dalton needed to delay any visit to the star for workouts or meetings, as well as to clear himself from the concussion protocol. It hit me hard the first day I had it, Dalton said of the virus. I eventually lost smell and taste. Early on that's not what I had. But by the end of it, I did lose my smell and taste and am still trying to get that back. By last Thursday, Dalton returned to the star to throw and ensure his timing was sharp during Dallas' bye week. He was able to fully participate in the Cowboys' walkthrough on Monday, officially shaking the concussion and COVID-19 protocol restrictions by Wednesday. Head coach Mike McCarthy declined to publicly name Dalton the starter for this weekend's visit to Minnesota but has lauded the veteran's performance in his return. I thought he was decisive, and he threw the ball very well, McCarthy said Thursday morning. That's the biggest thing, as long as the ball is coming out on time and so forth. I thought he was in rhythm. Andy has excellent command of the whole operation. I thought Andy had a good practice yesterday. It's great to have him back. Gilbert, who kept Dallas competitive in a 24-19 loss to Pittsburgh, is expected to be Dalton's backup. But McCarthy and Cowboys management have consistently touted a healthy Dalton as their best option right now. Dalton's experience in nine seasons with Cincinnati giving him defensive read capabilities superior to teammates with one or zero starts. Dalton also has the best repertoire to maximize offensive chemistry, coaches believe. 
Dalton took reps behind Prescott beginning in training camp while Gilbert signed with the team in October. Danucci's developmental year was intended not to feature much more than scout team contributions. Ben and Garrett didn't have the opportunity to have that bank account of reps, McCarthy said. It's definitely a larger menu to pick from. With Dalton at the helm and defensive improvement their last two games, the 2-7 Cowboys approach the 4-5 Vikings with more confidence than they'd publicly shown in recent weeks. They're last in the division, yet no team boasts a better record than Philadelphia's 3-5-1. The Cowboys await the easiest upcoming schedule, their remaining opponents combining to be 2-4-3-9-2. Yes, it's crazy, players admit, but the Cowboys smell a route to an unlikely postseason berth. The Dallas Cowboys have placed defensive end Tyrone Crawford on the NFL's reserve COVID-19 list. He joins quarterback Andy Dalton on the list. Crawford appears to be the first COVID casualty from last Sunday's 24-19 loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who announced on Monday that a player had tested positive and then moved four more players to the COVID-19 list. Tight end Vance McDonald was placed on the reserve list on Monday after playing 20 snaps against the Cowboys. Quarterback Ben Roethlisberger, offensive lineman Gerald Hawkins, running back Jalen Samuels and linebacker Vince Williams were placed in quarantine on Tuesday, as they were considered to have close contact with McDonald. Being placed on the list does not necessarily mean that Crawford has tested positive. The list also includes players who have been identified as having close contact with someone who has returned a positive test. The Cowboys have a bye this week and don't resume play until their November 22nd game at the Minnesota Vikings. The team implemented intensive COVID-19 protocols on Monday and cancelled their only scheduled practice practice this week. The only two other Cowboys to receive the designation were practice squad receiver John Via Johnson and cornerback Savian Smith at the start of training camp. The Dallas Cowboys placed rookie cornerback and former Alabama standout Trevon Diggs on injured reserve. Diggs fractured a bone in his foot last Sunday during the Cowboys' loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, an injury that could keep him out four to six weeks, a timeline that would bring us close to the end of the NFL's regular season. Diggs was a second-round pick by Dallas. He had 48 tackles, 10 pass deflections and two picks in nine games. McCarthy said earlier this season that Diggs earned the starting role due to his great work in training camp. He was proud to put him out there against the Falcons' receiving core and was glad that he responded well. He's earned a starting position at corner for so many good reasons, McCarthy said via DallasCowboys.com. He'll line up and play and the game will unfold the way it does. But he's a very impressive young man. He's off to a good start. It is Diggs' poise that stands out to the Cowboys' coaching staff. They enjoy his ability to compete without getting phased to different situations on the field. He doesn't panic out there, McCarthy said. When the inexperienced player sometimes gets in a tough spot, that goes back to that timing and rhythm and being in sync that you're always trying to improve on as a football team. But he's a very confident young man. In April, the Cowboys selected Diggs with the number 51 overall pick in the second round. Through four seasons at Alabama from 2016 to 19, Diggs recorded 68 tackles, one half for loss, four interceptions, 17 pass breakups, and two forced fumbles, two recoveries, in 44 games. As a senior, he recorded his single-season career high three interceptions, eight pass breakups, two fumble recoveries, one touchdown, and 37 tackles, one half for loss, in 12 games. Dallas has really struggled this season and we know why. It isn't to anybody's surprise that losing a star quarterback is going to make your team not as good, but the offensive line injuries and rebuilding defense have all added into this melting pot of mediocrity. Andy Dalton should be back this week, but if the offensive line can't improve, it won't matter much. We have also seen this have an effect on Ezekiel Elliott's game, as he rushes for 3.8 yards per carry, and just 63 yards per game. But overall Elliott has cost his team with three fumbles. Tony Pollard has had a few big breakout runs and has shown he has zero issue right now. Pollard is a very good back and sitting behind Elliott is a bit of a bummer. Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, and Michael Gallup have seen their production come to a bit of a halt, but Cooper still has 83 targets in 9 games and can be an X-factor this week against the Vikings secondary. 
the Dallas defense is allowing 28.8 points per game this season and 391 yards per game. They are getting gashed on the ground for 5 yards per carry and now have to face Dalvin Cook. Good luck with that. They are also allowing 7.2 yards per attempt and have allowed 21 passing touchdowns. While the Viking offense struggled out of the gates, things are clicking lately. It will be a tough task to slow down this unit and my money is on them struggling again. Meanwhile, Vikings fullback CJ Ham has been added to the reserve COVID-19 list, the team announced Thursday. He did not practice for the second consecutive day. Rookie guard Ezra Cleveland ankle also missed Thursday's session. Offensive coordinator Gary Kubiak told media members Cleveland suffered the injury early in Minnesota's win at Chicago but battled through it and played the entire game. Tight end Irv Smith Jr. groin, defensive tackle Hercules Modifa ankle, and cornerback Cameron Dantzler concussion were limited. Center Garrett Bradbury shoulder and defensive end Ifiadi Odenigbo shoulder fully participated. So, on offense, the biggest X factor that will determine the Cowboys' success will be their ability to handle the blitzes from this aggressive Vikings defense. On defense, it will be stopping Dalvin Cook in the running game and passing game. He is their main weapon.